Well, hello there. I'm boiling the water to put into my water bottles that I'm going to put into my bed. I do that every night so I don't freeze to death. <laughs> you know, it actually works pretty good. It keeps my bed really warm. These are the um, backpacks here. I, I put them, these are just from the dollar store. And I put the bottles in these white garbage bags and sealed them up with these clips here. I don't know if you can see the, well, oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, they're just like a, a clip for paper, basically. These are the bottles here. These are the bottles here. They're just like two liter pop bottles. I put two of them. I put two of them in my bag there. While I'm waiting for my water to boil, I'll tell you another story about my dad. But first, of course, I'll show you Rocky. You gotta see Rocky. Always gotta see Rocky. There he is. Hey, Rocky. Say hello to your fans. <laughs> Rocky's been hunting all day and napping and laying in the sun. He's been doing all kinds of good cat things. And he's, he's a pretty happy old cat, really. I love this little guy an awful lot. I thank God every day for him, you know. I don't know what I'd do without him. Anyway, just about makes me cry to think about having to not having him around, you know. So, yeah, I'm really grateful for him. But getting back to my dad. Back in the early 1980s, you know, I've already told you about a little bit about my cousin Alan, who was kind of incorrigible, but... <laughs> Let me tell you about one incident where my dad helped my cousin Alan and his friends out. Um, Alan was a few months younger than me. I was born in July of 68, and Alan was born in October of 68. And so we were teenagers at the same time, you know. And Anyway, around about 1982, I think it was 1982, pretty sure it was, um, in September, when the fair came to our town, the fair was always in our town every Labor Day weekend. It still comes to my hometown every Labor Day weekend, actually. You know, our annual agricultural fair with the rides and the games and the demolition derby and all that stuff. And, of course, the farm displays. Um, anyway, when that came around, the, the boss at the carnival hired my cousin Alan and a bunch of his friends to help setting up the carnival. So they all rolled in like on Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday in there of the, the week of the week of the weekend, the of Labor Day weekend, you know, just prior to that to set up the fair. And they hired these young lads to help them to set it up. And of course that's hard work, you know, that's that's really hard work. You're working outside in the sun, there's a lot of heavy lifting you're basically building a little village, you know, inside of an area there at the fairgrounds. You're putting up buildings, you're, you're putting together rides. It's hard, sweaty, dirty, and dangerous work. Anyway, those lads, they worked, they, they worked, they worked hard. And what they were promised for pay is that each of them would receive a full pass to the fair, which would entitle them to come and go as they please for the entire weekend, and they could go on all the rides they wanted to, and go to any of the events that they wanted to, and so on. And, you know, that was quite a value. I mean, going to a fair isn't cheap, and even in those days it wasn't cheap relative to the money we had, you know. And Anyway, they worked all day. They worked their, they worked their rear ends off, you know. They worked hard. My dad was over at my grandparents' house, who, his parents, my grandparents, met my and Alan, both our grandparents, and um, they lived only a block from the fairgrounds. In fact, if you stood in their front yard, you could see the fairgrounds from their front yard. And, pardon me, <laughs> my, old, my old bald head there showing. Um, anyway... You could see the fairgrounds from their yard. So my cousin, he come across there, and he was looking awful dejected. And I kind of froze up there. He was looking awful dejected anyway. And, of course, told my dad the story. You know, his uncle, my dad, his uncle Tom, told, told his uncle Tom, who was my dad, the story. 
Me and my dad have the same name. And anyway, my dad, of course, wasn't too wasn't too happy about it. And he said he said to them all, "How many in all did this work and then weren't paid for it?" And my, how many of your you and how many of your friends? Alan told him the number. My dad said, "You sit down here and wait. I'll be back." And he went over to the fairgrounds, and he went in there and he asked to speak to the boss, and he was directed to a trailer. Well, he went into the trailer, and he introduced himself rather roughly to the boss, and he told him, he said, "I'm going to require so many passes." to the fair that those young lads earned and they'd be distributed to them and he said if I don't leave here with those passes because he said you know you screwed my nephew and his friends out of their pay for the work they did he said if I don't leave here with those passes then all the stuff they helped to build I'm going to tear it down and he said I'm going to start with you well, my dad, he was a serious man, you know. He wasn't somebody to fool around with. And you could tell, you know, pe predatory people know when they're dealing with somebody who will make good on what they say. And so, my dad got the boys their passes anyway. And so they were able to go to the fair that weekend and have a good time. And nobody interfered with them, you know. And it was all good anyway, but... That was a story of how my dad helped my cousin when my cousin had been, and, and his friends had been taken advantage of anyway, when they had been used badly. And, uh, you know, like I say, my dad could be pretty hard on my cousin, but, you know, my cousin kind of deserved it too because he was a bad little bugger. <laughs> but at the same time, my dad was always there to help him. When, when he needed help, my dad would stand behind him his father wasn't around very much, you know, and my dad was there. When, when my cousin really needed him, he was there anyway. So that's just the story I wanted to tell. My dad, you know, he had his faults. He certainly wasn't perfect. Me and my dad, we had our ups and downs. We certainly didn't have a perfect relationship. I was actually quite frightened of my dad because my dad would knock seven bells out of me as quick as look at me if he figured I'd done wrong or if I had done wrong either way. But you know, like most fathers would in those days, and I think most of us were scared of our dads. And you know, but my dad did have a good heart and over the years I saw him do some pretty spectacular things. And I'm proud of him for that. And now that I'm getting older and, and on my way out. I just want to relay these stories because otherwise they'll die with me. Who, who's alive now that knows these things? Very, very few people. My cousin himself has passed away a good 10 years ago. He's not around to tell the story anymore. So that's why I tell these stories anyway. And I hope the people in my family who knew my dad and even the people who didn't but are in my family so they're still connected in some way will get some just get get something out of hearing them and I hope the rest of you will too anyway so I wish you all very well I hope you all have a good night sounds like my water is beginning to boil you can hear it whistling away so I got some work to do to get ready for tonight now that the weather's cold there's no fooling around you know I, I gotta take care of things and Make sure that me and Rocky are looked after. And it's going to get far colder than this too. So, like I say, this is just the beginning. This is just the practice. Last winter was a practice in itself. And I learned a few things last winter from making mistakes. And I'm now applying what I learned last winter to this winter. No doubt I'll still make mistakes. But, you know, I know more than I did. And, and I'm grateful for that anyway. So, I'm also grateful for all you guys that are listening to me rambling on like I am. Anyway, hope you all have a good night, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.